Hey, do you know how to do a curly burst fade? That's all right, I can teach you. Step one, we're going to pin up what we're not gonna cut first because he wants his top to be a lot longer than the sides. So then I'm gonna go in with my number four. This is gonna be a burst fade on the sides, really heavy curly back, and a squared top. So I started by pinning up the top and I'm going in with a number four just so I can see exactly how dense his hair actually is because it looked a lot denser than what I'm going in and seeing. So since I see this, his picture looked like a bald fade, but I can tell that from the thinness of his actual density that I can do a number one and it's gonna give him the same look and keep it low. So sometimes you can't go off of the picture because you have to go off of their hair density. And so now I'm just cleaning up with that number four. So I can really see everything. Now going in with my number one, I'm gonna start right at the ear. And the picture he showed me, it was a really, really hard V kind of into his sideburn, so that's what I'm trying to accomplish there. So I'm just using the base and the bottom of my teeth on my clippers with my one closed. And you can see I'm just kind of going right in and scooping out. And it was pretty dramatic, so that's why I'm taking a good bit of space for this. Now this part you're going to want to keep low and close to the ear. And then when you're coming into that ear, you're going to just start to curve your clippers to try to get that C shape. After going around the other side and repeating the same thing, I'm going to open my number one and just lightly tap into where my one was closed. Now going in with my one and a half closed, I'm going to tap right above my one guard open. And so I'm just step fading, going right above each one about a finger length. And then opening my one and a half, I'm gonna go right into my number four and still keeping that curve fade. So pretty hard C shape. And then this is where it'll start to kind of even itself out. And then going in with my number two, right above my one and a half open. And then using my comb, you can kind of just take some of that weight off before you go in and start to scissor cut anything, just to save yourself some time, especially for beginners. That's a really easy tip 
to just meet the comb with your clippers and you kind of start to create a weighted fade. And now I'm gonna go and line him up. I like to do all of my dry work first. Fade, line up, and then scissor cut. So I'm just kind of brushing all of the hairs that might kind of straggle out towards me to keep some crisp lines. And the client didn't ask for a beard trim, so I am just cleaning this up with kindness. So then I'm going to keep a C shape around the ear and I'm just kind of following the ear. So I do one side and make sure I really like the curvature of it. And then you kind of take a step back and look at it from a different point of view. And then once I have that, I'm gonna then meet the other side of the ear with that C shape as well. And I'm using my finger on my hand with my trimmer to kind of keep some stability on the client to where I'm not just free for all. And my trimmers are just kind of wiggling all over. You know, I want to be really stable with this lineup. And then you start in the middle of the back of the neck and you work your way to both sides. And then you repeat the same thing on the other side. And then I always pull the cape down a little bit just to double check for any neck hairs. And before taking the top down, I'm going to start blending his sides in because he does have a lot of hair. And when you're working with the curly hair, you really wanna make sure that you're going in steps because it can be overwhelming if you just have a big chunk of curls all over. So now I'm just kind of going in and taking off some weight just to give it a softer fade, but still heavy. And so I'm leveraging my comb on the head and then I'm pulling out and cutting anything that is staying in the comb once everything else kind of falls out. So you can see, once it falls, I start to cut because you know it's not the same length, so it's not gonna match. And that's me checking my corners. And I could have faded this up with a three and then back into the four but that would have really taken a lot of the weight out and he wanted to leave that and so in this back i'm going to try and keep a lot of that weight so i'm going to really over direct the curls so as you can see i'm pulling them out And now I'm cross-checking that cut that I just did by horizontally pulling everything up with my comb and cutting anything that does not match. And then I repeat the same thing on the other side. Now going into the top and wetting everything, I put a little bit of oil in his hair just so that the water can saturate it a little bit better so that I'm not trying to drown him with my entire water bottle. But his hair does soak up a lot of water, especially if you have unproperly taken care of curls, meaning that you're not using conditioner 
Um, you're using a three-in-one shampoo that is not formulated by professionals. Anything like that is going to cause your curls to really just have a hard time letting water penetrate the cuticle. So always recommend to your clients with curls, moisture, 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 conditioner. So here I am trimming his bangs. Now, using the bangs as my guide, I am going to cut the rest to the length. Now, I do want to slightly over direct because he does like that heavy top. So, I am keeping my hands pointed to the ceiling and then my wrist to the floor. And then here you can start to kind of even that back out because you don't want his back to be extremely heavy like it was as you can see right there because that will create way too much weight in the back and he's gonna look like a big old poof and we don't want that and so now to connect that back into the cowlick we can see I've already found that guide and I just want to match them together and then I am just going to double check right here and I want to keep some of that weight so I'm not going to keep my fingers really close to the scalp. And now I am going to find my guide that I created in the mohawk. going to start cutting everything on top to the same length following my mohawk guide cutting everything to the same length step by step moving in sections across the head especially with a lot of hair you can pull some out the front should start to fall out by itself. And then pulling out that length and cutting his cowlick. So now I'm going to cross check that, especially in curls. Now going in on the other side, following my mohawk guide that I made in the middle, I'm going to do the same thing step by step. I'm going to work myself to the back in sections, pulling everything and meeting it to the mohawk. And now I am going to check the sides because I want them square. So I'm not going to round it off, but I am going to pull it straight out and cut off that corner. Look at that. And this is going to give that square squareness to the curls because you're not rounding them off. So it's going to be heavier weight going across. And then I'm just going to kind of pull that to the side and make sure there's nothing overhanging too much. And then I have a slight angle to where it gets longer to match the length of the front. And so I'm asking him if he wants it to stay square or if he would rather it rounded out and he's liking the square look that's the picture he showed me but I always like to double check especially in younger guys because 
sometimes it's harder to explain exactly what they want. So always be sure to ask your clients if they want to change anything or if they like how something is or if they say shorter, I always say where because what you're looking at and what they are looking at can be two different things. I think all of these things can really help in a curly fade. So always remember, take your time, take the hair in sections and you don't have to work super fast or take a lot of hair off to make a difference in a curly fade. The way I would style this would be a wax or a pomade, something that's going to weigh down the curls a little bit, hold in the moisture and not really fluff them out too much. A clay would be a little too dry and make the curls a lot fluffier. So we wanna use something that's going to absorb the moisture and kind of put that back into the cuticle while styling the hair. Well, thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you got something new from it. Like and subscribe for more and I hope to see you back soon.